This week on Fire and Rescue, how getting to a fire is as important as fighting it. New recruit Claire is put through her paces. And the precarious rescue of a dog in distress. Stationed near to Junction 3 of the M6, the crews from Nuneaton are frequently called to accidents on the motorway. White Watch are scrambled. Today's emergency call reports a car has somersaulted off the carriageway. What we got? I don't know. Somebody in there, I think. Is that? It's teared up as well, Sonny. One person trapped, I believe, Speedy. One person trapped. Yeah, we're going to longboard him. Yeah. Longboard. My mate's longboard. Longboard, please. He's all right, but he's in a, they want to put him on a, a long board just to protect his back because they don't know what's happening to his back on the way down. He's, he's, he's knees up against something, they're just going to put the windscreen out, put him out the windscreen onto a flat board. The ambulance will strap him onto it, and then we'll take him off the back. Duck your head down, that's it. Ah. Steady, 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 steady. Uh, strap him onto the board. Yeah, turn it off, yeah. Do you want to go a bit more? Yeah, yeah. a bit more with the board. Oh. You can push off with this leg onto me if you like. Just in case there's anything surgical. Right, they're just making him comfortable on the, the longboard stretcher, and then when he's all strapped in secure, they're going to be carrying him up the slope, getting back in the, into the back of an ambulance. Seems okay, maybe possible broken collarbone, but it seems quite fitting well. Duck. Okay, See what happened, look? He's come off the motorway. Is it that? Launch. If he hadn't a bit that, he might have hit the tree at lower down and he might have all covered in the front, but who knows? A man's been transported via air ambulance to the hospital. We've all cleared up, waiting for the breakdown truck to make the car safe, and then we're all back home. The fire service covers nearly two and a half thousand kilometres of roads throughout Warwickshire. Potential drivers are put through a gruelling set of courses. They're taught to drive safely at speed and how far they can push both themselves and the engines. But parts of the county are very rural and drivers are sometimes asked to leave the tarmac behind. As one of the officers in charge of firebreak, Eddie Davenport's more used to giving the orders than taking them. But today, he's the pupil. Now we're coming to a flooded area. This is a lot of the work that you'll be doing in the county. Eddie's being put through his off-road paces by driving instructors Derek Harwood and Paul Hodges. Okay. Yeah. Right, off we go. Work it, work it, work it. Go on, work that wheel. Yes. Keep it going. Well Recent done. bad weather has made the course more treacherous than normal. Eddie will have to prove he can adapt to the bad conditions. The task is to get through the flood water safely and quickly. There could be people on the other side whose only hope of rescue is Eddie. It's not just in the outlying rural districts where there's a need for such specialist training. Nuneaton is surrounded by quarries. Steep cliffs with a lake at the base make access here particularly difficult. Just as darkness is looming, today's call is to rescue a dog which has fallen into the quarry. Yeah. 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 soft and that, he won't. How do we get down here? How do we get to this down here? Because if possible, we can get a boat down here, you see. Let's just have another look through these binoculars and... Uh... Go, Steve. Request the boat from Atherstone. Yeah. And uh, RSPCA to attend. It's only a small dog, a Jack Russell. Uh, it looks like it's just lying there, looks like it's injured. The only way to get there is to launch a boat and go across to it. It'd be a bit silly to come all the way down when we could get a boat and just go across and lift it up from the water's edge. We've got quite a few quarries in this area, and the dogs obviously are just running and they come over the edge and over the top they go. This one looks quite bad actually. The boat's been requested and the RSPCA, and also the actual owner of the dogs on his way around to you. Okay. Right, we're going to go down, can we go down there? Right at water's level, there's a dog. The owner's lad, unknown to me, has walked round the edge and is about 20 yards away from him. Right. 
Now, if he could, I would pick him up because he went round in the daylight. He's got to come back at night. Yeah, we'll we could have another casualty all the way. Right. All right. Get off and get Station commander Glenn Miller is called out to coordinate the rescue. In the pitch black, the boat is launched. The terrier is rescued and, to the relief of all, seems none the worse for his adventure. Recruiting more women firefighters is one of Warwickshire's priorities. There are three women at Nuneaton. Rachel Streeting was the trailblazer. She's now ten years into her career. I came here to the Neat Fire Station when I was about 14 on work experience um, and for a week. And then I joined at the time. Uh, the brigade had a junior firefighter scheme set up from 16 to 18. What have you got behind of yours? Because I've been out in the towers. They've all known me really since I was like 16. So I get on really well with them. Hopefully they get on with me as well. <laughs> and they're about to be put on the roof for this long. I enjoy working with other people as well, so it's nice for me actually to work with um, a group of people rather than solitary. So. And it's a job for big kids. The most recent recruit is 26-year-old Claire Waldridge. Like all probationers, she has had to go through an intensive three months at training school before going on active service. She started with Red Watch just four months ago. It's just exciting, you know, you don't know when you're going to get called out from one minute to the next. It's just, it's exciting, it's a good job, it's brilliant. Right in the heart of Nuneaton's busy town centre, a fire has been reported behind a row of shops. It's difficult to pinpoint where exactly the smoke's coming from. Wearing protective breathing apparatus, Claire, along with firefighter Tony Dumbleton, is sent in first to investigate. The crew needs to find out if anyone's trapped. One of the shops may be on fire. But it's soon discovered, for all the smoke, it's just the local Indian restaurant burning off some rubbish in the backyard. As it's just a small fire, Claire and Tony are called back. You don't need to tell me you don't need the ice breathing apparatus. Although they've not had to make any rescues, there's a danger this could yet turn into a very serious incident. The chap had been burning off some boxes. Uh, it's got a bit out of hand, but he burnt off the boxes right next to uh, the cylinder. It's not the uh, type of things to do. If it goes off, it's like a bullet, it'll go straight through a house. Yeah. Well, OK, that's why we, we make a big deal of it, because if it does ever go off, you'd know about it. It'll yeah. be straight through your house, out the other side, through the cars, they are like bombs. They are that cold as cold can be now. With the gas cylinder made safe, the firefighters can only hope that next time the Indian restaurateur wants to get rid of his rubbish, he'll use the takeaway service of the bin men. <laughs> Go on, Phil. This is the best my life's ever been anyway. It ain't even fault really. I just lad at an early age and like, brought him up on my own and I had my own house, I had a private rented house at 15. <laughs> Obviously I wouldn't change my boy and the way things are because it's probably made the character I am today. As long as everything's all right through my probationary for the next couple of years, I should stay here until it's time for me to retire. After success with the floods, it's Eddie's turn to tackle the forest. We've got a tree down! Eddie, get the saw! The path is clear, but the truck is stuck fast. The only way to get it out is by using plenty of elbow grease to work the wheels free. Work in the wheel, you're inching forward, all right. Go on. Go on, go on. Go on.
turn as close as you can to them, and you might get around in one turn. A good driver gets around in one. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Near my mouth. Sorry, can you say that again? A good driver could do that in one, in all, did it in how many? Just the one. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Look, another successful stage for Eddie, but the hardest is yet to come, and overconfidence could be his downfall. In the UK, there's an arson attack every six minutes, and the damage caused costs four million pounds a day. One of the biggest and most persistent problems for Nuneaton's firefighters is the rising number of deliberate car fires. Okay. Too close. Okay, buddy. Always sick of going out to car fires. They're a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. But the inherent dangers of car fires are any uh, gas-filled struts, suspension struts, the uh, the tailgate struts are all gas-filled or oil filled, and once they're heated up, they'll explode. You turn out they've got some real nasty stuff in there, all the plastics that burn and everything else, they're just horrible. While you're putting somebody's car fire out, as some idiot's gone and Nick drove round and, and torched, you know, Joe Bloggs down the road here who's stuck in a house fire, <laughs> they're waiting for us because we're doing something some Muppets done, so... No, I detest them. It's a waste of our time and a waste of our money. But those who deliberately torch cars could so easily face manslaughter charges. A hatchback has been dumped and set alight against this park home. This shows how the, uh, the vehicles were placed up against the building and the fire spread from the vehicle into the mobile home through the UPVC or PVCU windows. You can see the damage for yourself. It will have a devastating effect on the occupants of the building. They'll now probably have to start seeking other accommodation whilst they wait for their, uh, their property to be repaired. It was only a fortunate call of nature that saved the lives of the couple inside. And I thought, I'm going to the toilet, but I'm coming in, I opened the door, and I could see, you know, the, the light, the flames were going sky high by so that window. The vehicle was already on fire. Yes, yeah, it was. I dashed through, so I mean, my nighty, and put my trousers on. The glass was pinging away, and... Um, I got out the curtains, I said, oh, these will go in a minute. And this lady came and got off my arm, she said, come on, you've got to get outside. So she pulled me outside. And then the fire brigade were in, in seconds, sort of. Oh, Very yeah. quick, weren't it, love? Two fire brigades in... Glenn gathers evidence to prove this is another arson case. Well, we actually have a close liaison with the police, and scenes of crime will be here later this morning. We'll work with scenes of crime. Uh, we'll determine that there has been a, a deliberate fire. Then actually solving the riddle, that's down to the police. Although tracking down the culprits is a formidable task, Warwickshire are trying to get all their safety messages across to young people in a variety of ways. Tonight, a group of teenagers have been invited to Nuneaton, where the consequences of a car crash are about to be demonstrated. So we'll kick off, we'll go downstairs, we'll have a police road accident. Any volunteers? What we're looking for now is something called an initial assessment. While the officer in charge is making that assessment, the rest of the crew are now doing their bits. If you can just see into the Capri, they're putting a collar on. We're trying to give the younger people a real view of what can happen, what can go wrong out there. They're actually in the vehicles, being cut out. They get all the noise and the thunder that goes with it. And for them, it's a real eye-opener. And we've got two firefighters taking care of that now. We're going to make a hole in the windscreen. I'm actually in foster care at the moment, and uh, my social worker put my name forward to join the course, and um, just, just took off from there. I'm actually, I've been on the course before now, um, did the 10 weeks. And then I joined it again because it was good. I learnt a lot from the, the first course that I joined, so I joined again. 
There's a range of young people with a range of issues. I mean, some of those might be car crime offenders. And to actually see what can happen is just reinforces the message, really, of safe driving. When that custody comes out, they're going to come out in a nice straight line, straight onto that backboard. One, two, three, slide, rest. Ambulance over there. Custody's been taken to the ambulance or to the air ambulance if we need to get him to hospital rapidly. It's 2 a.m. and new recruit Claire is on night shift. You get a, a rush inside your body, and you just, if you say you're in bed, for instance, and the lights go on and the bowels go down, you sort of dive out of bed, quickly put everything on, and you're running out, and you, you don't know what to expect. It's persons reported or something, everyone's panicking and running onto their truck, and you're just shaking all inside until you get to the job. So it's quite, it's really good. Good, you get a buzz out of it, really. Dave Water lads, we want to tell that and have a look. It's another call to the Indian restaurant. <laughs> right, it's the gentleman's burning some rubbish off at the back of the shop. But uh, as you can see from where it is, it's far too close to the building. There's a danger it could set fire to the building as well. So we're going to put it out there. That's it. Yeah, well, like I say, if you're going to burn anything, you know, if you move it well away from the building, yeah. uh, otherwise you're going to have the building on fire. When is the best time to burn it? Because uh, every time I burn something, you lot come here. You see, if, if, if we'd arrived and, and it was burning, it was in a safe place, then we'd have left you with it and we wouldn't have worried so about it. So if I burn it. in the middle of there, I'm all right? If, if it was out of the way, last not Last time not I burn there, you come, because I don't, want, I don't want you here. Well, no, last time we came, there was this gas cylinder in there as well, wasn't there? I'll take it back to what it cost, well, that's where it belongs to. Right. <laughs> so I don't want you here. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm burning my personal things. I yeah. don't want you there's, here. there's no problem with you getting rid of your personal stuff, but like I say, what you mustn't do is have it too close to your building, because if you set fire to the building, then it's a danger to everybody else yeah, but, as well. Uh, I don't want you here. No, that's, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you that's to right. here. This is not my job in half done there. Yeah. So I have not pick it up, save it until you're gone, then do it again. Yeah. What a country, you can't even burn your own rubbish, eh? Yeah. Right, I'm going to stop messaging. You're right with it, Claire. OK. Come on. I mean, he's quite right. He's got every right to burn his own rubbish if he wants to, but unfortunately, he's doing it too close to the building. His building's attached to somebody else's, so he's got no option but to put it out. If, if it had caught the back of his property, there's a fair chance it would have spread, and then, and then you've got this uh, public case next door, which could then have become involved as well. It's just gone half past three in the morning. And as soon as we're made up, we'll go back and see if we can get our heads around with it. Back to home station, I think. So, back to sorting my bed out, or getting into bed soon. Early next morning, and Eddie's preparing for the final day of his off road course. You're going to be on your own, we're not in with you. But let's say, for argument's sake, this is two deep to cross. What have you got on the Land Rover that you could? Sand flaps on the roof. <clears throat> right. They're bridging ladders, virtual for, 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 for Land Rovers. And all you use, set them in and use them to cross. We have got all other ideas, but I don't before I forget the police with it, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then it won't, but I will. If you've got somebody across the other side of here and they're in dire straits and you've got to get them out quick, yeah. and there's life or death, what you got on your appliance you could use? The roof ladders. 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 Lay those in the... Uh... The triple X, use it. Because what it'll do then, it'll bend as you go in and it'll pull the vehicle out on the rounds of the mm -hmm. ladder. Yeah. The service won't like it, but in a life or death situation, if you've got to get somebody out, what's the ladder to a life? It's a way of getting somebody out quick if That's you need. Last resort. Last resort. OK. Right. With every move assessed by Paul and Derek, Eddie's determined not to fail. This is a perfect 
No, if you're going downhill, you need to control a controlled descent. OK. Eddie's leaving nothing to chance as he prepares for the final challenge. Again, getting him to take a slightly drier line to the left-hand side, off the ruts. Here he comes. Work the wheel, work the wheels! Hang on. Hold ya, hold ya. You've got to climb up here, Eddie. Go back down. This is one where the wagon's telling me where to go, not me telling that. Hey. <laughs> There's a bloody tree there! <laughs> it's a bit drafty in the back. It's blind, I suppose, really. <laughs> one of our lads in his wisdom. I was reversed into a tree. The spare wheel on the back door has bent the back door and smashed the window. Before Eddie can go home, the truck has to be repaired in time for the next course. But how much has the tree incident counted against him? He, he got himself into a situation. Look, the weather conditions got him into a situation. And because he was having trouble getting up the bank, that small bank, he was getting a bit carried away with it, sort of, I'm going to beat it. And Too you, aggressive. You, yeah, you can't get into that Too situation. Aggressive. You've got to still be in control all the way through. I would not to use the word failure, but uh, I think I could have done better, and we're talking to the instructors, we think we should run through it again. So, yeah, I wouldn't say, I wasn't happy myself. I wasn't that confident at the end of the day. So I've requested for another course, and they've agreed with me. Driving a car, or a lorry, ordinarily, you have a bump. If you're driving a fire appliance during an emergency incident or off-roading, it can be more than a bump. It can be people's lives are at risk. So we've got to be tough. We have a laugh and a joke on the courses, but we're tough at the end of it. <laughs>